in this video we're going to show you how to use the newer model of Alaris pump and priming and setting up a primary line as well as a secondary line. So before I start working with any of my stuff, I want to make sure I do have um, any of my medication. Of course, always do um, your three checks of those six rights um, for any fluids that you're going to be giving or medication. Um, so I'll say I've already done my first check of this for those orders. I'm going to start preparing my medication. Uh, so I'm going to, again, do hand hygiene one more time. I'm going to place some gloves on. And per your facility, when you're preparing the medication, you may or may not be required to wear gloves. Um, anytime you're going to be working with connecting it to the patient, though, however, you would have to wear gloves. I'm going to just wear gloves for safety. So I'm going to grab out my primary tubing. And what there would normally be covers on these. This has been reused, so there's no covers. And that's what most of you when you're practicing are going to come to see. But in the hospitals or facilities, there will be a cover on here and a spike cover on here that you would just have to take off. But I do want to make sure that I'm going to work with something I can control nicely. So I might use, I like to control with the roller clamp here. Make sure that's there. So now I'm going to make sure this is open, this little blue connection piece. I'll make sure that just one of them is clamped. I'm going to take my bag of fluids take off the little cap and I'm going to spike Let's see a little bit hopefully this works okay so I'm gonna flip that over upside down and again whatever fluids I'm hanging is just all per whatever is ordered by my healthcare provider I'm going to squeeze this and fill it about like third to half full and now I want to prime my line so I need to make sure I remove any air that is sitting within this tubing so a lot of facilities may have you get in the practice of priming it into the bag that it comes in um, so that way you're not hanging it into the garbage can and making it potentially dirty so all I'm going to do now is open my roller clamp and I know this was close because I can't move it when I open it it's going to be able to kind of wiggle around a little bit. So I want to make sure that I'm allowing now just the fluid to come all the way to the end of this tubing. So what I can do is watch it and see. And I know it's you can't see it in the video, but I'm just watching as the water or the normal saline in this case is coming all the way down my tubing. And I would want to make sure there's no air bubbles within my tubing. Okay. And this is a continuous fluid. So if you got a few more air bubbles, you could let that run out a little bit more. Um, if this was a medication that's dosed very specifically to the concentration of you know, what's now in the bag, you don't wanna lose a lot of medication into the tubing then, or out into the garbage. I would want to be very, very careful to make sure it just comes right to that tip. So I've primed that. That could go into the garbage normally. So what I'm going to do now, in order to put this in my pump, I have to take this little piece right here for the new Alaris and make it into that clamped position. Okay. And so that means that little white piece is going to be kind of popping out a little bit. And hopefully you can all see this. The blue is going to go into the blue slot that is here. So there's a little slot. Let that click. You bring this tubing up. And so that kind of sits pretty right on the top there. And then you take your door and close it. Okay. So now I can turn my pump on. Before we ever connect this to the patient, it, all those settings have to be present. Okay, it's asking me, is it a new patient? It's also telling me my door is. Okay. Does 
a new patient, I'm gonna say yes. Um, I am on a medical surgical floor. This is gonna be, again, pertinent to whichever floor you're on or department. I'm just gonna say yes, I am on a med surge floor. So yes. Um, I don't have any patients that are programmed here because this is a learning model when you are in the hospitals and facilities. They will have uh, programmed patients. So I can just hit confirm for right now because I'm not gonna tie this to a specific patient. Um, that just means that the pump would be connected within like the computer system and automatically recording certain data for you into your chart. So I want to work with channel A because this right here is an example of a PCA pump. We're not gonna be working with that today. I'm just gonna be working with my channel here. So I wanna select channel select. Okay, you have a few different options when it comes to your pump. There's guardrail drugs, you have guardrail IV fluids, and then basic infusion. So for those IV fluids, guardrails, that's where I'm gonna find any of these like big bags of my normal saline, lactated ringers, half NS, those kind of things. Um, I don't want to use basic infusion because that is not gonna use any kind of safety guardrails. So I could program whatever I would want into there and technically it could not be safe for the patient. So you wanna make sure you go under guardrails. So for IV fluids though, I'm gonna hit that. And now I would just scroll down until I found my medication or my fluids in this case. So I know I'm working with 0.9 normal saline based on my order. So I'm gonna hit the 0.9 NS. Okay, and it asks me that's what was selected. Is that correct? I can say yes. Okay, and my rate is gonna be whatever is ordered by my healthcare provider. I'm gonna say my physician has ordered this to run at a rate of 100 milliliters per hour. So now I'm going to type, oops, I wanna make sure the rate is highlighted so that way I can input my numbers. You saw without doing that, I wasn't able to press any buttons yet. So 100, I can hit enter to go down to the next line. This says VTBI, so that's volume to be infused. That's gonna be based off of whatever size my bag is. So this is a thousand milliliters and I can see that on my bag, thousand milliliters. So I need to make sure if it's a continuous infusion, I'm gonna wanna make sure they get that whole bag, but I will be conscious to maybe cut it just a little bit short. So when it indicates to me this pump that it's done, I don't have air within the line. I wanna stop it when I still have fluid within this little chamber here. So I might choose um, like maybe 980 or 990. Um, you'll kind of find a number that works for you. There's no rule there is just you want to be mindful that this would not fill with air when it's done. All right, and so I hit enter. So now everything is programmed. This is when again, I can do another check if I need to. I'm gonna to have to do always that third check before anything is like hung if I'm in that patient's room. So all my medication checks would have happened at this point um, before I connect it to my patient. I would need a flush and an alcohol pad. So again, we've already ID'd our patient, we've done our three rights, our three checks of our six rights. I'm going to wipe off their port with alcohol really well. Okay, garbage can there. I do want to make sure that that dries and get rid of any air bubble that was sitting there. So I'm gonna say this has dry. No, this is not a correct, I need a lure lock. But I would have a no. There we go, perfect. So for a nice little example here, this is an oral syringe. I can't actually connect that to my port over here. So I would need to make sure I have a lure lock which you can see has the ability to actually twist into this. So I just line up that little circle with the blue circle and then I twisted it. And so at this point I would unclamp anything here and I would make sure to, I'm gonna flush a little bit. I always wanna pull back, check for blood and I would wanna see blood come through here to say, yes, in fact, it is in the vein and we're gonna talk about that in 
226. But then I can flush it, making sure I don't see any signs of any complications like infiltration or um, phlebitis before having started. Patient is not complaining of any pain. Perfect. So then I can detach that and I would connect my tubing to the patient. Again, all checks would have been done at this time. Now I would wanna come back to my pump and hit start. Okay. But I did leave something clamped here. And you can see that was starting to highlight yellow because it was saying I'm checking the line because there was an issue. The issue was it was clamped and it wasn't gonna be able to continue. Okay, so I wanna make sure all of my clamps are open before it's proceeding. Okay, so now my patient would be running their primary fluid, so now I wanna set up a secondary. So what I can do is I could allow that to keep running while I'm at least getting set up because it may take me a second. Um, but when I'm actually gonna be hooking it up, I do wanna pause my primary. So for a secondary, again, same rules apply of your three checks of your six rights of medication. I would have to, again, make sure that I'm always checking my bag um, to find that information to do that check against that medication um, administration record. My tubing I'm gonna pull is a little bit smaller. It does come with a little blue hook. So I can put this primary line through the hook. You'll see some people will hang it pretty low. Some patient, or for some clients, you might be able to hang it a little bit higher. All depends on gravity. Once we start running our secondary or our IV piggyback, I would wanna make sure that only the piggyback is running. If this was also uh, dropping a little bit in the chamber, I would have to maybe drop it down a little bit further. So, have that part at least ready. I have my tubing. I always like to make sure, right now, that's not clamped. So I like to take it and clamp it so that way I have nice control and I don't get a whole bunch of air into my line. Okay, so for the secondary, you're just gonna have to untwist a um, little, whatever stopper, it's normally like a little plastic piece. For these and sim, it's gonna be golf tees. Make sure you pull off the little spike cover, and then you take your spike, and you're going to put that into that part of the bag. Not this part, because that would be for putting medication into it. Okay, so now I can take this, put it over here, and take my bag. And so, again, a lot of facilities may like you to prime into the bag that it comes into, as I mentioned before, so you're not dumping it or accidentally pulling it too close into the garbage. So before I open my clamp, you do want to squeeze this so you have about half to a quarter or half to a third. And then I'm going to open up this little blue um, clamp ever so slowly because for this one, this is, let's say, their antibiotic. I don't want to lose a whole bunch of fluid. I want to make sure that I watch exactly for when it hits just to that tip, okay? So I'm going to open it nice and slow. And where did mine go to? Oh, there. Very easy. Okay. Put it just to the end. Okay. And so now I've primed my line. All the air is free from it. I do want to now go ahead and I'm going to just pause this one. I can go ahead, if I think that this port that is above the pump, if I think it's touched the pump at all, you're always better off to um, clean the port. I know I just hung this line. I know it was fresh and clean. Um, if you're ever coming in and hanging a line that's, you know, it's been running, you always have to swab, but I just recommend always swab because even if it, there's always a potential that it could have touched something on the IV pump. Okay, so you scrub the hub. And then again, you always want to make sure that you allow this to dry. Don't need this anymore. So I'm going to say this has completely air dried. 
I'm going to attach this. So my secondary or Ivy piggyback line gets attached to the port that is above the pump. Okay, and I can undo my roller clamp because this is paused. I'm going to do my channel select. I wanna hit secondary. So there's a little arrow here under the secondary. And then I set it to whatever my medication happens to be. So in this case, I have vancomycin. So I can either page down, page down, page down, or I can skip down to where V is. And vancomycin is the only one programmed on our pump. So I'm gonna say that is the one. And then, let's see. Oh, perfect. And I have one gram per 200 milliliters. And that actually is the same thing then as this thousand milligrams for 200 milliliters. So I'm gonna select that one. If what I needed wasn't programmed, I can always input that data. So select, I'm gonna say yes, this is in fact the right one by hitting the little arrow next to yes. Okay, and so then again, you always wanna confirm. As we've said, we've already done our three checks of those six rights. This is again, that extra confirmation right at that bedside that it is in fact, maybe, whoops, oh. <laughs> 1,000 milligrams in 200 milliliters. So I'm gonna hit next to confirm. And this is again, giving me what the rate is gonna be, how many, what's that VTBI, that again should match my volume to be infused that was on here. It's telling me it's gonna run over an hour and a half. So I always wanna confirm that that does match my orders. And so then this is also asking me to verify that my secondary clamp is open. And it is open because I know I can move this around. That means it's open. Okay. Wow, no. <laughs> My settings went away. All right. Well, you get to see that really quickly. So sometimes if you take too long, it goes away. So I'm hitting the same buttons. Yes, it was the vancomycin. Yes, it was that concentration. Yes, that is the correct rate for it to go, correct volume to be infused, correct duration. I checked my clamp. So now I can hit start. Okay, and so right now, what I should see if I set this up properly would be my secondary is running or my IV piggyback, but my primary is not. Okay, so how this will work is that it's pulling by gravity whatever settings I put. Okay, so for 200 milliliters, it's gonna pull at whatever rate was set for this antibiotic. And as soon as 200 milliliters is completed, it's gonna flip back over to the setting that I had for the primary, which was 100 milliliters per hour, okay? So again, the pump is only as smart as the nurse who is setting it. You can make a few mistakes if you set this incorrectly or this incorrectly or don't have it lined up properly. And in this case, only this one, I don't know if you can see it better with my hand here, only this one is dripping. And that's what you wanna see before you leave the room and this one is not dripping, okay? And so like this, my antibiotic, once it's complete, it will bounce back over to my primary. I didn't necessarily have to be in that room at the exact hour and a half that was gonna be done, but I obviously do wanna come back in around when it should be done so I can make sure everything went in properly. And of course, you can always check on your fluids whenever you're doing your hourly rounding. And I think that's it for setting your primary as well as your secondary, thank you.